lot of you have not seen the restoration of this truck. We've talked about it, but you haven't seen it. And I have all the photos that document the restoration, including some of the earliest photos of this truck coming home and some early video as well. Now, if you're like me and you love the Creeper truck, I thought you might like to see it. So let's dig in. The truck arrived in October of 2008 and was really rusty. It had been sitting in Ocala, Florida, where they filmed Jeepers Creepers, and it was just rusting to the ground. You can see how crusty it is here. And when you'd open the back doors, you could just see daylight in the roof and around the upper edges. There was a lot of work to be done. We started with patch panel work. Here the cal vent panel is being replaced. It's tacked in and ready to be welded. We had to replace the dash support, which goes underneath the dashboard, and that is done here. We also had to replace the panel above the windshield and it is fully welded in in this picture. And you can see the panels we cut out, how rusty they are, and especially the upper windshield one is missing half of the middle of it. We took all the sheet metal off of the truck so that we could get to the inner structure. We had to replace the feet to the cab that uh, it's what the cab sits on the frame with. So these foot pads were replaced on both sides, left and right, from a donor cab. And uh, we also replaced the tow board supports on both sides. Uh, those were rusted beyond use. And so those old ones were cut out and these new ones were spot welded in uh, to accept the new tow board. We replaced the outer kick panels on both sides as well. And so this cab was really starting to look pretty good. You can see how nice the metal is once all of the crusties are off of it. I tried to keep some of the original paint um, on this truck, um, but a lot of it had to come off uh, for the betterment of the finished product. We, we added some rust in the crevices of the hood and uh, grill here just for effect to see what it would be like, sort of experiment with uh, surfaces. We also replaced the dash with a 1936 uh, Chevy dash. Uh, a lot of the panels used older dashes in them, and so we went with that for this truck, and it just had a meaner look. I had to add an inch on each side, and we also had to put a V in the top of it to fit a V windshield, but it was a nice touch. Uh, we got the uh, windows tinted next and into the truck, helped to keep the cats out of this thing. I kind of wish I had tinted the windows and got them done after I had finished doing all of the metal work. But nevertheless, it was the next step and it was looking pretty good. The uh, truck made its way down to a friend of mine's shop uh, where it would get ready for about a two and a half year restoration. Here we have our 388 stroker motor, a Chevy 350 that's stroked out to a 388 sitting in place. And uh, I took the bumper apart. The company for Jeepers welded the whole thing together and I made it bolt to the truck the way it should. Bumper bolts to the bumper brackets, which bolt to the frame. And so uh, it was just much better for the truck. I purchased period correct bucket seats for this truck and I cut the seat riser out of the cab and I hinged it with 50s Buick trunk hinges so that it would tilt back and allow access to the motor, which I placed directly under the seat. It really ended up working good for uh, this project. I removed the siding and the roof sheet metal from the truck to gain access to the uh, structure and we did have to remove three or four feet of the square tubing on this uh, and replaced it with unrusted metal. I added extra structure to the sides that would make the truck quieter going down the road. And it also just provided more support for the sheet metal. I did that on the roof as well. We put a pickup floor in this truck 
and it required some fabrication to do it, but it got rid of the hump in the middle and just provided a flat floor, which was pretty nice. Uh, we started siding the truck uh, shortly after we repaired the, the uh, structure, and that went very quickly. You can see here um, the belt line has been done. We have the uh, sweeping uh, pieces that run along the bottom of the box done. I heat shrank it also so that it would be a lot quieter going down the road and just be a lot tighter. And so uh, it went pretty fast and it, it, was, a, it was a fun uh, project to skin this. Uh, we did the part over the uh, cab as well. We've got the uh, 700R4 going in behind the motor now. Uh, that was fully rebuilt, race uh, ready. We moved the battery to the rear of the truck and we put in an under the bed, quote unquote, type gas tank. Um, you can see the power steering unit here out of an Isuzu truck and a power brake uh, booster unit. Uh, it's not in these pictures, but we added an additional uh, vacuum canister to help offset the uh, large cam in this truck. Uh, the gas tank worked out very well. It just fit under there perfect, and it was a great addition to the truck. We have the uh, transmission cooler also that was added to the rear here, and I used some of one of the original brackets, which was kind of cool to help hold it. Uh, we ran fuel line. Now this was a closed system, so we ran a inlet and an outlet, and the fuel circulates, and the system uses what it needs. And uh, we also started uh, plumbing the brakes as well. And you can see barely there that I used the original cross member for my motor mounts. That was kind of a cool little touch. Kept the vintage look of the truck. We started adding elements to the motor, um, components getting closer to starting the truck. Uh, we've got our throttle cable in here and we've got our brake pedal setup done. We had to kind of adapt a system to uh, work with the original pedal and go to the new uh, location for the booster. Um, this, so the, here the truck is really uh, starting to come along. It's relatively airtight and it's very close to running here. There's that beautiful rusted out area right behind the uh, right front wheel. I did do a little rust repair there to help lengthen its life, but it just looks beautiful. Uh, I was able to save the sheet metal on the back of the box. We were able to save the two doors and one piece. I did replace the driver's side back panel and the, and the panel above the, the rear doors. So I was getting close to time to mess with paint and I just wanted to uh, see how it would go with the door. So this was sort of a little test that we did. Uh, you can see here that we uh, plumbed the truck and so the radiator hoses are connected to exhaust pipe to uh, get the water to run all the way up front to the radiator and surprisingly I was worried about this but it actually helps it cool if uh, the water has a longer path. We started messing with all of the dents just uh, faking rust and experimenting with ways to make it look as real as possible. This was a cool uh, thing that we did. Um, I put in the uh, latch hardware that you would normally find in a 40s uh, truck. Originally this truck was just a prop and so it had gate hardware that would allow you to close the doors. You can actually see one of the latches there that I went ahead and left in. But this truck received a full working latch mechanism so it worked off of the back handle on both doors and uh, it just operates very smoothly and it operates like it would have if it were built in the 40s. This is the primary door, which would be the door that you open first and I made an interior uh, handle uh, mechanism work for that. And so you can get out from the inside also. We did our own custom uh, tachometer housing and we mounted it to the dash to make it look as original as possible. So uh, it, here we're starting to really get into paint and I painted a, uh, 
sealer on it and then some primer filler. I didn't do the entire truck. I left a lot of the front sheet metal alone because it had some original paint on it. But we did a lot of it. I did what was necessary. And hey, if some of the paint flakes off or it's not perfect, that just adds to the allure, correct? I found that um, the more times you go over uh, something, the more distressed it starts to look. And so for those of you who want to do a distressed type paint job, uh, don't be happy with two or three passes. I probably have 30 or 40 passes on this. That isn't to say that it has 40 coats of paint, but I would spray paint on and then I would take it off. I probably used as much thinner when working with this paint job as I did paint. And I would just age it a little bit at a time and uh, just go for the look that I wanted. And I would just keep going until I got what I wanted. I, uh, w I did use some filler on the back box to help make it quieter and also smooth it out a little. And when I did, I cut out pieces of cardboard and, and glued them to the box and then did the filler and then pulled them out. And so you have some actual recessed pieces uh, that you see there in the uh, rust color. Those are actually recessed. Um, so that was pretty neat. I restored this truck to be a combination between the way it was created in Jeepers Creepers and the way it would look coming out of a field. Uh, it's much brighter than it would be if it were just sitting in a field, but that's an homage to the way it appeared in Jeepers Creepers. But I also wanted it to be pretty well detailed and look pretty good, so if I was at a show or convention and people walk right up to it, it really looks good. It doesn't just look like a prop. And so with each layer and each time that I kept touching the truck, it just kept getting better and better. I uh, used a paint roller to do the uh, vertical um, fresh rust uh, stains. And um, it just, it was a labor of love. It was also hard to get the right color of green. It's very elusive as you're doing this. Uh, one color will affect another. But over time we got it. I added the red splotches as you can see and really just um, started to come together and really start to look good. We added disc brakes to this truck and this is a cool little one-off, not one-off, few-off kit that somebody made. It utilizes the original spindle and so everything stayed perfectly in place. This is an International Harvester uh, rotor from around 2005, I think. And the, the uh, calipers are from a 2012 F250. Um, but it was just a really cool little kit that went on this truck and it makes it stop really good. And people are always surprised when I tell them this truck has disc brakes because it looks completely original, and yet you look through the holes in the wheel and you can see the disc brake rotors under there. This truck was in a magazine, a Rat Rod magazine for Halloween of 2017. And we took a lot of pictures for that event and you can see the attention to detail in this paint job um, on some of these closer uh, up close pictures. Now it isn't perfect. It really is an homage to the way the Jeepers production company painted the truck in uh, Jeepers Creepers in 2001. But I just wanted extra detail. So if somebody got up close and got their eyeball right up to the paint, it actually looked real. This truck uh, garners a tremendous amount of attention as you might expect. And I would say probably about half of the people, maybe a little more, know what it is. And the other half are just as interested in it. Most think that it is uh, some kind of an old military truck and that it just came out of a field somewhere. And that's really a pat on the back for me for all of these those hours of painting. You can see this beautiful uh, little rusted out area on this fender here, passenger fender, it came out good. I would say there's probably uh, maybe four or five months invested in the paint job on this truck. 
And the beauty of it is, is if it gets a little nick or something happens to it, I just add a little bit of rust there and you can never tell. We spent just as much time on the inside distressing that as we did on the outside. And so this uh, interior of this truck really is finished and it looks like it's 70 years old. And when we sent it to go work uh, for Jeepers 3, the movie people were really happy with it. They didn't have to do anything. It ran great, it was dependable, it was very fast, and it didn't need any uh, paint touch-ups. You can see the truck here uh, sitting on a flatbed and it's going to work at uh, the Jeepers 3 company. Um, this is December of 2016. This is a cool set of pictures here. You can see this is sitting in the uh, warehouse in 2001, Jeepers Creepers Production Warehouse. This is when the truck arrived in 2008. And then here is the door with the same stickers on it in 2017, give or take. And in this picture, you can see the uh, original hood and how it has all of those uh, stereotypical dents from the Jeepers Creepers truck. And that's why they use this truck as a prototype. And this is the steel version of the cannon that I made to replace the plastic one that they created as a prop. Well, I hope you guys have liked this video. It's a lot of unseen footage of the restoration of this truck. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget the bell notification so you don't miss a thing regarding the creeper truck. See you next time.